Python trainer Reuven Lerner here, and today I'm going to talk to you about loops in Python, and specifically the else clause on loops. So let's do a really simple for loop here so we can sort of build up to what's going on. Let's say that the in operator does not exist in Python. Let's just pretend it doesn't exist at all. And I have a string, s equals a, b, c, d, e. And I want to look for d. So normally I would just say look for in s, right? Look for in s, and that'll tell us, yeah, in fact, d, the letter d, is in a, b, c, d, e. That's a no-brainer. But what if the in operator is not there? Then what I'm going to want to do is a for loop. I'm going to say for one letter in s, if look for equals equals one letter, then we'll say print something like found look for in s. And sure enough, what happens? Well, we do this loop one letter at a time in s, and each time we're checking, is one letter the same as look for? And if so, we print this out. So far, so good. But what if we want to say, yes, we found it, or no, we did not find it? Well, if we want to say we did not find it, then we're going to need something a little more sophisticated. We're going to need what is often called a flag variable. It's a Boolean variable, a variable that we're going to give a true false value to. And we're going to initially set it to be false. And if we find the letter, we'll set it to be true. So I can do something like this. I can say here, found it equals false. And then we can say, if we found it, then we're going to say here, found it equals true. And then I can say here, if not found it, then I can say here, print, sorry, I did not find, look for in S. And so now, of course, it says, well, I found D in A, B, C, D, E. And if I take my variables from here and just copy them down, what if I'm going to look for exclamation point? And now it's going to say, no, I did not find exclamation point A, B, C, D, because what did it do? It went one letter at a time. It never actually set found it to be equal to true. And so when we got down here, if not found it, well, found it was still false, not flips that logic, so now it's true. And so we say, no, we did not find it. And so this is something that's extremely, extremely common. We're going to iterate over a whole bunch of things, and we want to stop iterating at some point and if we found it, if we achieve some sort of goal. And if we did not achieve the goal, then we're going to want to indicate that as well. And a flag variable is a pretty typical way to do that. The thing is, Python provides us with another way of doing that, and that is the else clause. And let's just expand our code a little bit here. What if my S is A, B, C, D, E, A, B, C, D, E, and I'm looking for D? Well, now what is it going to do? It's going to print D. I found D twice. Well, it did find D twice, but we only want to know, did it find it or did it not? Again, a Boolean sort of thing. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to say found it equals true and then break. Why should I look more than once? If I found it once, that's enough. And sure enough, now we found it once. All right, this is where the else clause comes in. So here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to take this code. I'm going to copy it. I'm now going to say here, not if not found it, I'm going to say else. And that looks super, super weird. I know it. I'm also going to get rid of everything having to do with found it. And look at this. It works. It found D. And if I look for exclamation point, it says, sorry, did not find it. So what the heck is going on here? All right, the else clause, first of all, I cannot stress this enough because people get this wrong all the time. The else clause is not connected to the if. The else clause is connected to the for. It's for else, right? And it's really common. For example, I use Emacs, and Emacs often sort of auto-indents else to be aligned with if because it assumes that you want if else. No, 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 this is for else, uh, not related at all to or else, which is just a threat you give people. Well. Anyway, anyway, we don't have to get into threats. Regardless, basically this for else means we're going to do our for loop. And the else clause will only fire if we did not encounter a break. Meaning, if we got to the natural end of the loop and we did not encounter a break, then the else clause will run. So what's happening here in this particular case? We're running the for loop. We're going again and again and again. If we find what we're looking for, then we break. And thus, the else clause does not run. If we don't find what we're running for, then we get to the natural end of the loop, and then the else clause does run. Now, what's confusing here is that else doesn't obviously mean that, right? So maybe they should have used a keyword sort of like, you know, got to end of loop without encountering a break. But that was probably a little long and wordy for the Python developers, so they went with else. So what does this mean? This means, first of all, if there's no break, in your loop, then else is useless. Don't even try. 
else is only going to be useful if there's a break in your loop. Second thing is, if there's nothing special that you want to do, if you get to the natural end of the loop, then don't use else. Um, so should you use else? I really like it. I think it's a fantastic, fantastic feature in Python. And yet I know that many people get confused by it. They see it and they're sure that it should be aligned with the if. They're not sure exactly what it's doing or when it's going to fire. So I understand the reticence of many people to use else. I do use it by using these sorts of situations. And I would argue that you should probably comment it um, and indicate what's going on just so that people don't get really, really confused. But I do think that it sort of shortens your code, makes it more expressive. And I should also add, you can also have a while loop, while else, in exactly the same way. And once again, if the while loop gets to the natural end, then, um, you know, that, then basically it gets to the natural end, then the else clause will fire. But if it encounters a break, then it will not fire. All right, I hope this was helpful and useful. If you have more questions, contact me on Twitter or via email. And I'll be back soon with more Python hints.